Hey guys, Myths Reborn here. I know it's been a while, but let's get back into it. Today, I wanted to talk about Gaia, the mother of Titans. I know I've talked about Gaia before, but in this video, I wanted to focus more on Gaia's children. Now, this is Gaia. She is the primordial Greek goddess of the earth. She is the earth. She was one of the five born from the void of chaos. According to Hesiod's Theogony, she was born alongside four other primordial gods, such as Tartarus, Eros, Nyx, and Erebus. Now, once she's born, Gaia takes center stage. She is always present, though not as active in the later myths as other more popular gods, such as her great-grandson Zeus, take on a leading role. She is the Great Mother. For the Romans, she was Terra, or Terra Mater, the Earth Mother. A later Roman Neoplatus, Macropius, identified Gaia as an epithet of the Roman goddess Bonadea, the good goddess. Gaia had many children. Many, many children. <laughs> the first three of these children are considered primordial gods as well. They are the Urea, or Orea, Pontus, and Uranus, or Uranus. These first three children were conceived without any lover an example of parthenogenesis in Greek mythology. That is to say, it was a sexual reproduction. They are fatherless. The Orea are the great mountains of the world. From these mountains, many springs rose forth. These became the abodes of the nymphs, dryads in the deep wilderness of the world. These springs become the rivers that eventually fall into the realm of man. The next on the list is Pontus, the great elder ocean. He is the deep, the unreachable extent of the water's depths of our planet. Some sources do claim that he may have been the son of have been the son of Gaia with the either, the great bright sky, a child of Nyx and Erebus. But for this series and simplicity's sake, we shall focus on the fatherless version of Pontus. Though a child of Gaia, Pontus and Gaia do eventually produce at the very least five children. Now, even though for us this seems wrong, it is a common trope in Greek mythology. This joining or union of two beings that are described as being family members. For the Greeks, there are two main reasons why this commonly occurs. The first reason is that they are the incarnations of natural phenomena. It is not a mother with her child, it is the embodiment of the earth itself, joining with the elder sea to bring forth more anthropomorphized entities, deities, beings that describe how our world works. And two, there really wasn't anyone else. Now, let's come back to the children of Gaia and Pontus. These are Nereus, Thaumas, and Eurybia. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering these names. This is how they're spelled. The next child of Gaia is Uranus, or Uranus, Father Sky, the great primordial god of the heavens and king of all the gods for untold millennium. He becomes the official consort of Gaia. It is his union with the great earth that causes the Greek mythological stage to explode. Their first set of children together were the three Hecatonchires, otherwise known as the Hundred-Handed Giants. These were massive beings described as having a hundred heads and, as you can imagine, a hundred hands, powerful and strong. They were Rarius, Cotus, and Gius. Again, I am sorry for butchering these names. If you did read the Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Battle of the Labyrinth, written by Rick Reardon, then you probably recognize at least one of these hecatoncheries. The next set of children were the furries. The next set of children were the first three Cyclops, Brontus, Brontus, and Seroptes. These singled-eyed giants were the ones that eventually construct the first lightning bolt of the sky god Zeus. Oranus was not happy with these creatures. He saw them as ugly and grotesque, and eventually banishes them down to the depths of the underworld, into the chambers of Tartarus. They tried again. This time, Uranus and Gaia produce 12 children who would eventually become known as the 12 Titans. Their names were, again, I apologize for butchering the names, but their names were Oceanus, Tethys, Hyperion, Theia, Nemesine, Creus, Phoebe, Coeus, Themis, Iapetus, Rhea, and Cronus. In the big story of Greek mythology, some of them play bigger roles than others. Also, in some versions of these myths, 
there was a was a secret 13th titan named Dion or Dione. I have organized the titans not necessarily by birth order, but in their pairings. Many of these titans end up becoming couples and procreate with their own group, their own family members. Many of them will have their own videos to come. First on the list is Oceanus and Tethys. These two became the new gods of the sea as Pontus took a back seat. Their myths are complex, with some versions of these myths seeing them as parents of the titans instead. Oceanus and Tethys become the parents of thousands and thousands of water nymphs and spirits known as the Potomoi and the Oceanids. Theia and Hyperion are next. They became gods of light, brightness, and the sun. They are the parents of Helios, the sun, Selene, the moon, and Eos, the dawn. Next up is Coeus and Phoebe. They be Leto eventually becomes the mother of Apollo and Artemis by Zeus, and Astarte becomes the mother of Hecate. There is little information on Creus other than his union with Eurybia, one of the children of Pontus mentioned earlier. Together they became the parents of Astraeus, a god of astrology, Pallas, who became the father of Zealous, Nike or Victory, Bia, and Kratos. Some of you may recognize the name Kratos from the God of War franchise. And last but not least, they were the parents of Perseus, who joined Astarte and became the father of Hecate, the magic goddess mentioned earlier. Iapetus became the father of Menoetius, a being known for his defeat in the Great War against the Olympians. Epimetheus, someone who is not considered too smart. Atlas, who holds the world in his shoulders. And Prometheus, who is perhaps the most famous of the second generation of Titans. Themis, mother to the seasons and the fates. Mnemosyne was the goddess of memory, the goddess of memory and became the mother of the nine muses by Zeus. And last but not least, in this list of titans born to Gaia and Uranus is Rhea and Kronos. Rhea became an earth goddess, a successor to Gaia herself, while Kronos, on the other hand, is the youngest and most famous of these 12 titans. You see, Uranus was not the best of father figures, as you may have guessed, and before these titans had children of their own, they had been cast down to the pits of Gaia, to the underworld. Uranus wanted to reign alone and supreme, afraid of what his children may do to him. This is actually a common theme in Greek stories. Fathers afraid of being usurped by their children. Gaia was displeased with how Uranus had treated her children. She created a sickle and asked for the Titans to help. Many of them were hesitant to do anything against their father. But Kronos, the youngest of the Titan, took this sickle and, as his father slept, castrated him. From this castration, his blood and material fell into castration, his blood and material fell into the earth and into the oceans. This created the sea foam that eventually leads to the birth of Aphrodite, the goddess of love. The blood of Uranus that fell to the earth eventually joins with Gaia, and this results in a final union between the two. With the blood of Uranus, or Uranus, Gaia eventually gives birth, to the giants that will be destined to challenge the Olympians after the fall of the great golden age of the Titans. Now, the story of the Titans overthrowing their father does not end there. Kronos becomes king of the Titans and leads a great golden age in this world. But this will be covered in a future video going in depth to each of the Titans and their great war against the Olympians. Let's come back to Gaia, the great mother. She was the mother of Titans, but she did produce many more children. Without it being in any particular order, Gaia gave birth to the Furies, the great Typhon from Tartarus who challenges the Olympians, Orion, the speed horse, Triptolemus, the python of Delphi, Charybdis who threatened Odysseus. There are so many more from such a wide array of fathers. Beasts, monsters, gods and goddesses, even entire races were all born from Gaia. Gaia is a mother and a setting. We all live on Gaia's realm. She gave Zeus and Hera the tree of the golden apples for their marriage. She witnessed the union of Aeneas and Queen Dido of Carthage in a cavern. She helped Rhea protect Zeus. Gaia may take a break from being the center of Greek stage after birthing many of these beings, but she is always present, and the Greeks knew this. If Odin is the all-father for the Norse, then Gaia is the all-mother for the Greeks. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you made it this far, Please give it a like, it would really help me out. Subscribe to see more content on all sorts of mythology, history, literature. Um, please ring that bell icon so you can get notified when I upload a new video. 
and fight when I upload a new video and leave a comment of all the children of Gaia, which one is your favorite? What gods or goddesses do you want me to cover next? Which names did I butcher and which ones did I not butcher too much? I am hoping to make this a somewhat chronological series of the entire Greek mythological stage, so I will probably focus on individual groups of titans next and then cover the Olympians one by one before expanding on other Greek world individuals and big Greek events. You can also follow me on TikTok as Myths Reborn. Check out my blog and please consider helping me out on Patreon, PayPal. A little bit really does go a long way. You can also check out my Instagram. I actually have two. One is on books and myths. That's the name. And the second one is Joe in Japan because I moved here to Japan a couple of months ago and you can check it out. I post photos there, reels all the time. Thank you all for your support and see you soon. Thank you all for your support and see you soon. I do promise to be more consistent with my videos and, you know, feel free to throw in some recommendations, throw in some ideas. I do have a list of things that I want to cover and I do want to turn my TikTok into longer, more fleshed out videos. And all the while, I do want to keep continuing doing this Greek mythological deep dive. Thank you so much. And yeah, stay tuned.